It's at oh. the band chamber. We've well, got the go live. Perfect. Well, we are live on the Facebook. Um, I like calling it the Facebook still today because that's, I remember when you actually had to type in the Facebook uh, for it, but for those who haven't met me online, my name is Jim Johnson, President and CEO here at the Pearland Chamber of Commerce in Pearland, Texas. And I stress that because this goes out to people all over the United States as we discuss training topics. Uh, we refer to this program as let's talk about it. These are conversations with successful businesses, uh, successful speakers, successful trainers on things that will impact your business that you can take back and implement uh, right away. I'm, I'm, I'm always excited about our speaker, but uh, when our vice chair is like, Jim, Heather is the, this, I, I'm, I'm stoked on it. I'm excited. Uh, let's get her in. And, and she, Kiana does some great work to get Heather to join us today. Talk about marketing espionage. And, and uh, I, I love that topic. I love the, the uniqueness of it. But marketing is such a, um, always a on the minds of our members. And we recently surveyed all of the members of the chamber. And the top two topics that people wanted to learn about were marketing and leadership. So we're going to cover one of those two today. Uh, again, this is our Let's Talk About series, always the third Friday of the month at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, live streaming on Facebook. But at this time, I will turn it over to our vice chair uh, of the Chamber of Commerce over our Cultivate Talent in our business development section, uh, the wonderful owner of Friendly Faces Senior Care, Kiana James. Kiana, thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for having me again. And thank you, everybody. We know it's it's hot here in Texas <laughs> and we are making do. We know a lot of people are on vacation this month. So hope you guys are able to join us here on Facebook Live. And if any of your friends wanted to join the session, they can always catch it later on the Chamber's website, uh, Facebook page, and then also on YouTube. And so it will be recorded. So I wanna, I'm very excited about our topic today because I love all things marketing, branding, sales, et cetera, et cetera. And so we do have a marketing expert here, Ms. Heather. And I wanna tell you a little bit about her business. They empower business owners, entrepreneurs, and marketing teams to dominate online with easy, non-technical SEO or search engine optimization, or what they call findability training. They are with you arm in arm all the way with private training, group workshops, and retreats. They help you find customers ready to buy online. That simple. But I also wanna talk a little bit about Heather. So I wanna read her bio. She founded Findability Group in 2000 in response to all the frustrated website owners who had paid good money for beautiful, high-tech websites that weren't bringing in business. As for her, quote, street cred, she spent three years training advertisers in paid search techniques for Yahoo Search Marketing. She's also a member of the National Speakers Association, a sought after Vistage international speaker and has shared the stage with Tony Robbins, Business Mastery in ooh, Fiji and in London. As far as her passions, she has a passion for connecting businesses with their perfect customers online. And these days you will frequently find her either preparing to leave for a speaking engagement or just getting back from one. She has even been on Oprah. <laughs> and we'll tell you all about it if you ask. I need to ask you about that. I love Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> so our topic for today is marketing espionage. And so with pleasure, I'm going to turn it over to Heather. And I'm not pronouncing your name. So please let the audience know how to pronounce it correctly, because I do not want to chop it up. But I'm going <laughs> to turn it over to Heather with Findability. Thank you so much, Kiana. It's let's see, like, let's see how she does. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I've i been working with business owners for over 20 years. I would say it took me 20 plus years to be an overnight success. <laughs> so I've learned a few things along the way, you know, built a couple hundred websites, maybe more. I've lost count. 
Um, the thing I find interesting, especially through my work and the three books that I published is that even when I was starting way back when the dinosaurs walked the earth and the internet was in its infancy, um, you know, there's still just as much uh, miscommunication and misunderstanding around online marketing. Um, and I get a lot of mis a lot of frustration from people who have hired other vendors for SEO, which is search engine optimization, meaning that's I can I can finesse my website to make sure that I show up on the first page of Google. There's paid search, right? I can buy my way into there if I choose. Um, also, I want you to think about world domination by keyword phrase, meaning it's not just about one position on that page. Like, let's get scrappy. You know, as small business owners, we don't have a lot of time and we don't have a lot of money. And Lord knows we don't have a lot of resources because we're busy running our businesses. So I want to give you some easy things that I want you to take a look at. And we're going to spy. And we spy in three different ways. We spy on ourselves. So when someone goes and Googles your company name, what do they see? How can we make that better? And that's just the easiest low-hanging fruit that we're going to get. How can we you know, make simple adjustments to your online presence that'll make a big impact. So that's the first thing we're gonna look at. Then I'm gonna show you some tools about if you're creating content, if you are frustrated because you have a website that doesn't perform, you have social media, but you don't get likes, followers, or subscribers, and you're doing everything that the marketing gurus in your life have told you to do. But at the end of the day, it's the first time in our professional career that we don't know what people are doing. Right. As CEOs and business owners, we are in the driver's seat most of the time. Sales, marketing, website, all of it. But what I find is that this is where we sort of jump off and we're like, OK, we have no idea. It's kind of like mechanic. My son is a Maserati mechanic. OK, he takes care of Aston Martins, Maseratis. But at the end of the day, people roll in after spending all this money on cars and they question my, my son about do they really need a new air filter? Because I think that we question mechanics like we do marketing people because you know there's no quantifiable way of, I mean, there is a quantifiable way, but it, we don't understand it, so we question it. And so the more that you can be empowered, I like to say guessing is expensive, right? So let's stop guessing. Let's get rid of what's not worked historically. Even though you feel comfortable with it, it might be time for a change. And let's just walk the path of an online customer. I'm going to send a couple of materials here for after our program. I'm going to send everyone, Jim and Kiana, I'm going to send you a digital copy of my book, Marketing Espionage. And I've also got something called a Trello board. I'm going to send you guys the Trello board. And what a Trello board is, think of it like a big, um, uh, a big board that you can put all kinds of cards on. And all the things, not all the things, because I don't have enough time, but some of the things I'm going to talk about today will be on this master board so that you guys can go in and make a copy for yourself and, you know, play. This is all about playing, right? We're not trying to bust anyone out. We're not trying to make you feel bad about what you're not doing. That's not, where, that's not why we're here today. We are here to show you some simple ways in which you can make a big difference for your findability. That means, do I search for you in social? Do I search for you on Amazon? Do I search for you in Facebook, Twitter, YouTube? They're all search engines. I think we forget that. We forget that. Okay, so let's start with Let's start with this. Anyone been here? <laughs> I've always At least it. three times today, Heather. You know? <laughs> right. What I find amazing is that this screen has not changed since the day, pretty much. I mean, the logo changed a little bit, but it really hasn't. And they still have the I feel lucky on here. Anyone ever hit that? <laughs> it's kind of fun. Every now and then I'll go and I'll be crazy. That's what my life is, right? I'll go crazy and hit I feel lucky. All right, so let's talk about this. Google is the number one search engine. Uh, the number two search engine is YouTube. And so, and we have to think about what are all the ways in which we can get found inside of Google. So we're just gonna talk about Google today. Now, a couple things is when you are in Google, you have something called personalized search. Personalized search says, well, you've been, I love Earl Grey and I love, um, um, I'm just gonna go with my favorite things. I love Earl Grey, I love lipstick and I love rose gold, okay? so. As much as I search for those things, right, Google is watching and capturing that behavior. And what happens if we Google ourselves, also called ego surfing, if we Google ourselves, right, our business, I'm saying, then I'm going to check you out. And you already know this behavior already. The problem is, is when you Google yourself, you have something called a personalized search result, 
meaning someone who's never Googled you before will see something different than you will when you Google yourself because you have this, this um, filtration that's happening based on what you've done before. So here's what we're going to do. Here's my cursor. We're gonna come all the way over to Chrome. Now I'm in Chrome for the purposes of this program, but you, know, you, can, you can be on whatever you like. Now file, and then we're gonna to go to something called new incognito window. You get this little spy guy. This was actually the, uh, this was actually was sort of the, the idea for marketing espionage, this little guy. Now, when I come here, the, the information I'm searching for in Google, right? It's not gonna see my browsing history. It will not see cookies inside data and information entered in on forms. It still sees some of the things though. It still sees the website you visit, your employer or school and your internet service provider. So we'll know it'll see those things, but we've created a nice barrier. So now we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go to Google. All right, so when we search for something here and I'm not gonna be logged in, so stay logged out. So when you're looking for concert tickets, airline tickets, anything that's an auction model, you always wanna be incognito. The reason being is that they cookie you. So if you went yesterday and you found this fabulous flight and you're so excited, you get go back the next morning, there's a good chance that flight will be more expensive because they have cookied you. They know you were there before, therefore they know you want that ticket. So they're going to bump it up. It's good marketing, right? It's really good marketing if you think about it. Remember AAA plumbing? That's how people hack the yellow pages. Anyone? <laughs> you put AAA in the front and it will put you right in the front of the yellow pages, right? <laughs> That's good stuff. Those days are long gone, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. All right. So from here, we're going to Google our name. When I say name, I'm going to go ahead and Google my company name. Let's see if she can type this money. Now, the anatomy of a search result page is fascinating. When you're seeing this, there's all different kinds of things that Google looks out. So when you search for something like my company name, Findable University, it's gonna go out, it's gonna look at all the assets that it's indexed, and then it's going to take a look at what matches that request. So let's dial this back just for a minute. Google was founded on indexing professorship content at Stanford, right? Larry Page and Sarah Gabrin, the founders of Google, built a database to index all of the most latest and brightest content coming from the professors and from the students at Stanford. Now, this has then blown up, right, to the Google algorithm. So remember you do a decimal system, guys? Are you too young to remember those things, Jim and Kiana? <laughs> the Dewey decimal system? I do remember them, Heather. Thank you. I, I, I'm going to say thank you. I mean, that's great. <laughs> I, I don't remember it because I'm so much younger. I, yeah. I only heard about it. In, I think it's an urban myth. Yeah, so, exactly. You know. <laughs> So the Dewey Decimal System was an effort to index and make findable everything in a library. The Google algorithm is doing the same thing, but it's trying to get and see everything on the internet and then trying to place it into a category by which you can find. So inside of Google, the categorization or the Dewey Decimal System of the internet is one keyword phrase at a time. You get 10 search results under any keyword phrase on the internet. Some are paid, some are not. So this is the most important because this is someone who's already heard your name. You've got to work with these people. They're amazing. And so they're going to Google your name. This is the most important insurance policy for your online brand. So what we're seeing here is this is the first listing. Now this, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. So right here, this is not a sales pitch, right? I'm sorry, this is not a resume. It is a soft sales pitch. I don't care how long you've been in business. I don't care how gorgeous your website is. What's in it for me? Do you understand my pain? And can you make it easier for me to take the next step? So take a look at what I did here. So right here, this is called the title tag. So think about a term paper for a minute. If I wanted an A plus in a term paper, then there was a lot of things I would have had to done. And the one was I have a cover sheet and it has the title, right? Which tells the professor what the paper is about. That's what this line is. This line is called the title tag. Very, very powerful. Now, first of all, of course, you're gonna have your name here, but what about putting official site? If you have people that are, that are reselling your products or that people get confused on where to go, official site is a very powerful phrase to put on your website. The geek in your life will know how to fix this. 
Now, another thing you could do is you could say the authority, the leaders, right? The go-to experts in. So use this as a, like that first digital handshake and come out swinging. Like, tell me exactly what it is you want me to know about your company. Then you're able to talk a little bit more about yourself. But again, I'm not talking about how long I've been in business, how great my customer service is. Those are already standard expectations. Does anyone remember when a free shipping was actually an offer you were interested in? Oh yeah, you're Amazon. About it. Yeah, that was a, that was yeah, a sales pitch. Free shipping, what? Right, now it's an expectation. You expect it to be free. And you get kind of irritated when you have to pay for it. So what we wanna do here is we wanna make sure we're talking to them. So we empower businesses to dominate online, training, team coaching. Then we switch. So this is my language. This is their language. So I want them to schedule a findability review today and a phone number right there. So when you're Googling yourself, you may see something that dot dots out right here. Okay. That means that, that the, the, some of these you can't, you can't change, but this one you can. So you get 60 characters for this and you get 140 characters for this. If you go too long, it will dot, dot out. It's like stopping at mid sent. And a lot of times, have you ever been to a website and you can't find the phone number? It's like in seven point font in the footer. Okay, right next to the social media, <laughs> which I would call anti-social media if you put it in the footer, not in the top corner, okay? All right, so let's take, these are called site links. And what these are, are the most visited pages on your website. We are not able to control these, unfortunately. They are, they are watched and monitored through Google Analytics. So Analytics knows that these are the pages that get the most amount of visits, okay? So let's scroll down. What else do we see here that's representing your brand? First of all, I wanna make sure that you own every asset, meaning it is you, no one else is trying to butt in to yours. This is your page. So we have LinkedIn, of course, it's gonna be there, and my company page, which is in there. You'll notice that I have three videos here that have been optimized to be findable for this page. Now, what I mean by optimized, it's really not very, not very uh, you know, difficult. It's just, you have to know what to do. So findability, university. And what I want you to notice is that, do you see how I have specifically put my company name in the titles of these videos? Because they are the best examples of the videos I want people to see, okay? So I'm being very strategic. What's the title of this, my, of my page, my homepage? What's the title of my videos? So I can start stacking every single asset that I want customers to see, I'm gonna put my name in it. So remember, Google's just going out going, okay, what's got findability diversity in it? Let's bring it in, right? And then we can, as business owners, we can, we can adjust these things to our favor. And they it costs us absolutely nothing to do this. But we have to make sure that, you know, that's why we belong to a chamber, right, Jim? So we get access to experts that give you these kinds of shortcuts. Okay, so then I'm gonna keep going down. There's Facebook, there's my YouTube channel, Pinterest. Now, Pinterest is a very interesting animal. And a lot of you are like, ah, my business has nothing to do with decorating and floral arrangements, right? The interesting part is that Pinterest is a search engine. My Pinterest account, my board, has been here for as long as I can remember. So let's talk a little bit about hacks for a minute. One hack, if you, if you have something on this page that you don't want here, you have a couple of decisions to make. You can say, I'm gonna create a couple other assets and push these other erroneous ones off. So one thing is create a Pinterest account and a Pinterest board. Name the board, Findability University, put all your images in there. And it will in due time, it will rank here. It's a hack. I don't honestly know why it works so well, but we do it for all of our clients and they rank. So think about what else can I do to get another spot on this page? Now, here's another hack is SlideShare. SlideShare is owned by LinkedIn. So if I go in there and I, SlideShare is like a Wikipedia PowerPoints. I go in there, I create an account called Findability University and I upload pro, um, you know, presentations that I feel comfortable with the public seeing. Now, Google absolutely loves SlideShare. So you'll see here that it takes up another spot for me. And I'm good with that because that's my, that's my content. And then finally, I've got Twitter, okay? 
Now, so those that's the landscape you wanna look at. If you only do this from today's program, Google yourself and tweak what's already there. This is the title, that's description. Clear call to action, good phone number. And then think, what else, what else can I do to make sure that I own every single spot on this page? No competitors, no negative reviews, ideally, and nothing are like, what, why is that there, right? We, we can do better than that. We just, no one has ever really, I'm assuming, no one has ever had you look at yourself like this, okay? Because this is what customers are seeing. Now, another thing I want you to look at. So right here, this is called a Google My Business or Google Business Pages now. This is based on my specific location and there's a radius by which this is going to pull. So if I'm in another city, I may not see this because I'm right now in Centennial. If I'm in Boulder, I'm not gonna see this because it's based on the geo-targeting of my, of my internet here. And it's a specific circumference around where you tell, the, you tell Google where you wanna pull customers from. But let's make sure we trick this out nonetheless. So what you'll see here is I've gone in and loaded my pictures. So when you're thinking about what can I put in here, I don't want the picture of your, the, the, you know, the dump, the dump, what do you call it? The, 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 the dumpster in the back of your Google, my business, Google will drive by and take a very sketchy picture of your business. <laughs> you're like, I don't know why I have seen the backs of dump trucks dumpsters. I mean, you can't imagine. It looks like it looks like something out of a horror movie, right? So what we need to make sure is that we add our own images. So you guys can upload your own images here. So as you'll see here, I have uploaded pictures of the work that I do with clients. This is a testimonial video. You can upload a testimonial video. Show me why your place is the best place to work or work with next to Disneyland, which I hear is not so great anyway. <laughs> I know that for a fact, it's an offline conversation. Now, <laughs> so you'll see here that as people, now look at this one, I've taken this and I've put the testimonial right on top of the image. So these images are incredibly important to creating trust and authority because there's a lot of shysters on the internet and you don't know who you're talking to, right? The only way that you could not look like a shyster is to have a really solid, search engine result page. Now here's the crazy data. So 92% by last Comscore study, people don't scroll down. They will only make a decision what's called above the fold. It's an old newspaper term. So remember, remember newspapers I mean? Take a newspaper and you have it folded. That's above the fold. You fold it out and then you scroll down that's below the fold. So 92% never scroll down. The hardcore researchers will scroll down, but then they never go to page two or a very, very small percentage. So it is a page one game, okay? Now, this is our, now let's talk about the number two way people use Google, which is Google images. Okay. Now I have a bit of an interesting issue because I am both Heather Lutze as an author and speaker, and I'm also an agency owner. I like to call this the history of my haircuts. <laughs> I, you know, do we, do we all get the vote oh, today, well. Heather? Do you like the most? <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to go for younger, if that's okay with you guys. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, as a professional speaker, like, why is that one of all in my kitchen? You know, like, what the heck? Why is that one the one that's there? So I'm going to go ahead and take a look. I know people will probably search that way, but in most cases, they search for findability. Okay, now let's take, let me make this a little smaller. That would be bigger. So this is a visual storytelling engine, okay? You are telling a story about your business based on the images that it sees. Now these images have all been named Findability University 1, Findability University 2, and so forth and so on. So you can control what shows up here. Right now, this is the content. So remember, Google's going out, looking at images. Which of those images is named Findability University? Not image one, not 4529.png or .jpg. It's looking for a specific 
naming conventions of images on the internet that match Findable University. So what I've done is I've gone in, I've looked at the, the amount of content I have. I've picked 10 images and I have renamed them so that when Google comes back to my website, it's gonna pull the images that I want to come up here, okay? So Heather, I mean, that's a, I, I just did it for my own organization and everything that popped up was logos because we label okay. all the logos on our website as Paraland Chamber logo. Right. And the only images are from like newspapers who probably did Pearland Chamber ribbon cutting or this and that. So right, right. You, we can go back into our website and potentially rename all those photos and upload them back in. Right. Pearland Chamber luncheon picture. And that would potentially help with the Google image yeah. search. Copy. Or maybe even better would be join our chamber. And then the next one is meet our members. And then the next one is why join? But do they need the, does it still need that? Like with y'all, so y'all, when you relabel these findability university, do they mm -hmm. still, does it say find a, does it say findability university plus those expressions? Okay. Yeah. Or you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But you can curate these images to be those that you want to show. And we think that we're just at the mercy of Google here, but we're, we just need to be a little smart about how we manipulate and name our images. Because that is, is why these are here is because you've told Google that it should be in some form or someone else has. So if you see competitors here, you see things that you're like, ah, that's there. You know, like this is a very important, I'm sure everyone has been to Google Images at this point, it is the number two way people search on Google. It's very powerful. So be mindful of your web developers, when they built your website, named your images in a way that made sense to them. Mm -hmm. It's not something I, that happened that made sense to you. Yeah, Again, we I, don't question the mechanic, right? We don't question the mechanic. We just hope the mechanic knows what they're doing, right? That's same for web developers, okay? Wonderful. All Thanks, right. Heather. That's fantastic information. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of an interesting uh, to kind of look at your own, uh, your own business. Now, the final thing we're going to take a look at is Google Video. Now, Google owns YouTube. So it's always going to give preferential treatment to YouTube videos, always. So if you have on Vimeo, you have them on other third-party hosting, just keep in mind that you know, YouTube is the child of Google. The child is going to get the most amount of credibility here. That's just how it works. So Vimeo is really great if you have like a gated community, meaning people are paying to get access to videos or they're only used in a private setting. My recommendation would be absolutely use YouTube as your, where you house your videos. Now, you'll see, you know that I, of course, because I'm like that, I will make sure that in the titles of each one of these assets, you'll see that I've put my company name here. Okay, as you go down, you'll see that the phrases that are in here, they're here for a reason because I chose to put Findability University right here in the title of that video. Every video is like a little mini term paper, right? It has a description and it has a title. So the reason these are here is because I have chosen them to be here, okay? And, and this is usually kind of a wild, wild west. Like what the heck is showing up under my company name? It's very interesting exercise. So those are the three main areas that I want you to focus on. If that's all you do from today is Google yourself. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that Google reviews, they are tough to get. And the negative ones always come up. So trying to get rid of a negative review is almost impossible on um, on uh, Google. So here's a little food for thought. I was up in Santa Fe. We had a horrible experience at a restaurant. The, the waiter was really rude and it just was just a horrible experience. So I wrote a review about it. Well, this gentleman then turned around, made an account called John Smith and posted that I was rude and unprofessional from John Smith. And I have tried five ways to Sunday to try to get that review taken down from John Smith. And you think that they'll take it down? No. 
So what I did is I said, this is why people hire us. And I broke my own rule, right? Show a little, show a little, uh, you know, humble pie here is I learned the lesson that I trained all my clients not to do. But once it's there, you can't take it back. So what's important is to make sure that you're asking for reviews, one review a month from a happy client. Don't do it all in one day. Don't have all your employees do it in one day, but you know, stagger it out and make sure that you're getting, that, that really does have an influence in a positive way of your business, okay? And that's a whole other story. Now, one thing I want you to see is a lot of you may see glass door here. So if you hire, so I can go in here and I can do, let's see what's, I don't have a glass door because I don't have a lot of employees, but um, what should I do here? I'm trying to think of, let's do like, this is a very big question. I'm gonna do IBM glass door, just for an example. All right, glass door is where people go to flame when they've been fired, okay? If you're worried about hiring, People will find this and they will check you out. So this is like a crowdsourced verification of what it's like to work for you. And you don't have any control over this. So what you can do though, see, so it says for employers, I would highly recommend that you unlock your employer account. I think it's like 55 bucks a month, pay it. Because then we can come in here, we can customize the banners. You could upload the pictures from your charity work, your chili cook-offs, your all the things that make the internal processes so appealing to your existing clients or your existing employees, I should say. Really important that you keep your eye on this. Have HR keep your eye on it or whatever, but you're going to go in here and see there's 91,000 reviews. You're probably not going to have that many. But you see here, you can write your description here. You can write the description. You'll see that we have all different kinds of pros and cons. So there's a lot to learn from what upset, um, although it's hard, right, to see upset employees, or I should say ex-employees. It's important though that we get ahead of it. So just like Google reviews, Glassdoor, I would also recommend you do Indeed as well. Pay the money, make that look amazing, and have that brand protection for your business. If you are looking to hire, you have the most incredibly savvy candidates now. They will Google you on LinkedIn. They will Google you on YouTube. They will go to Glassdoor. They will go to Indeed. And they will then have to make a decision and your website, of course, about is this a place I really want to work? Does it look interesting? Is it ghost town pictures? No one's there. Like empty cubicles, empty front desks, empty, you know, conference rooms, lunch rooms. Don't do that. Get people in there engaging and talking and, and smiling and, you know, do not make everyone leave when you go to do a photo shoot for your website. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I hope I've shown you that there are ways for you to take control back of what shows up in Google. And by making these kinds of small tweaks, you can make a massive impact in your bottom line and it will cost you nothing. And maybe outside of your web developer's time, to adjust this. So number one, Google yourself. See if you can fix those titles and descriptions. Work with your web developer to make sure that those are not going to be too long, okay? Number two is make sure to go to images. Pick 10 images on your website, name them your company name. Then those images in time will reshuffle. And then finally, Google video or YouTube. Pick eight videos, 10 videos, and um, optimize them for your company name. So I'm, I'm kind of crazy about tools and I love different tools. And there's a couple different ones I thought I might show you um, that just make life easier. I don't know about you, but I like, I like my life, especially when it comes to something like marketing because marketing can be very overwhelming and we don't want that anymore. So I'm gonna go back out of, and I'm gonna go to a website called Lumen5. Now, Lumen5 creates videos from content you already have automatically. So what it does is it uses AI. Give me a second here to log in. All 
there's always a login, right? With with the and of course they always want a confirmation code. Isn't that fun? Making sure you know it's that. Making sure it's you. Oh, I tell you, I have to check in with myself all day long. Like, are you still you? Are you sure you're you? <laughs> are you absolutely sure you're you? Right. Okay, let me go back. This is silly. Let's try that. Of course not. What the heck? What are you doing? Sorry about this, guys. No, take your time, Heather. And, and those who are watching on Facebook while we get there, if you have any questions for Heather, do you want to put them in the chat? You can. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah. Like our, it's like your uh, podcast. You know, it's those 30 second commercials in between thing that typically you hit the 15 second button to go ahead on those things. It's I awesome. know. It's, it's, it, there's always something, right? Right. Come on now. All right, well, here's what we're gonna do, because it's being difficult, is okay. Lumen, Lumen 5 is a fantastic tool. And what it will do is it will take all the content from, uh, from your blog, let's say it's a blog, okay. and it will automatically create a video that is got video backgrounds, titles, and automatically. So that if you can't afford to do real video production, Lumen 5 is a great way to go. Now, one other one I want to show you before we wrap up here is one that's called Jasper, jasper.ai. You'll notice you'll see a lot of AI, artificial intelligence. This is really interesting because I know a lot of businesses really suffer with creating content. And this tool, what it does is it socially aggregates a concept or a theme based on what it is you've created or want to create. Okay. Everyone wants me to sign in today, don't they? One. Oh, Sometimes you just can't win. You know what I mean? Yeah, it goes. It's that incognito window, probably. You know, it doesn't remember anything you before. That's a good point, actually. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna create a document. Now on the dashboard here, you can create anything. It's pretty remarkable. So here you'll see that if I want a press release or I want, um, I want to prove existing content, blog post ideas. Uh, so let, you know, blog post intro paragraph, or blog post conclusion paragraph. So you'll see here that there's some fantastic resources in here. So let's go ahead in and let's do the blog post ideas. Okay, so we're gonna do, so Jim, what's the most common way that people refer to, to your company? Actually, you know what, I'm gonna take that back. I'm just gonna say why, oops, why should I join a chamber of commerce? Okay, then I'm gonna say, um, networking, Connections and business growth um, entity. Let's go with that. I'm just kind of making this stuff up right now. Okay. Audience is small business owners and large business owners, but for this one, we're going to do this. Let's go with witty. Let's say uh, three ways to utilize your chamber of commerce membership. Okay, so you're just going to give it some ideas. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to ask for a few more. Then I'm going to go ahead and create. So what it's done here is it's looked out into the web and it said, what kind of phrases or ideas can I glean to help give you some recommendations on a topic for a blog? Hmm. So what you're seeing here is why Chamber of Commerce is important for all small business owners. Why join a Chamber of Commerce, a powerful network and business growth entity? How Chamber of Commerce memberships help grow your business and how joining a Chamber can benefit your business. So which one would you like for 500? Jim, you get to pick. We'll, we'll choose number four, how Chamber of Commerce membership help grow business. Okay, done. 
Okay, so there's our blog idea. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna copy that. So now that I've copied that, we're going to open this. So it's taken all this in here. Here's our topic. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna say, uh, let's see, uh, where am I? Compose. Huh. One more. There you go. There's your blog post. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll, take your, I'll, I'll take your credit card at the end of this program. Wow. That is pretty, that is, I mean, for small businesses, I mean, you know, they they're busy, you know, and this would be a great tool for them to get into blogging without having to actually write a blog, you know? So this is all unique content. So it's not plagiarizing it from anywhere on the internet. It's taking, mm -hmm. what is the sentiment right now? You've baited it with three ways, right? You have to give it a little bit of help. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. You could say five ways, seven benefits, five mistakes, uh, secrets is a good one. Um, you know, yeah. five secrets, right? So I like to say done is better than perfect. You can mm -hmm. always go in and take this and finesse it now and it's done. So if you're struggling with content generation, you know, there's always, we use this to write SEO content. So once we know the magic formula for what keyword we want to write, a keyword we want to write for, then what we do is we put all this information based on what Google tells us. And then we get a fantastic article that is now SEO friendly. Wow, that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. so that's Jasper and um, uh, Lumen5. You got to check it out. They have like a free version. And a, but if you have a blog post or you want to point it, you can point it to a video on YouTube. You can point it to a LinkedIn profile and it will create an automatic video based on the content on that page. Wow. Man, Heather, uh, great information. I think, you know, uh, I, I took more notes than I have in a long time. My marketing <laughs> team will have to come back and watch this because I think what you're doing is it's taking those little simple tips that we forget to do and yeah. telling your, I think at the very beginning, you said we have to spy on ourselves. And if we're not spying on ourselves and seeing what other people are looking at, how will we really know what is coming across as we try to market and gain exposure? Right. Um, Heather, uh, again, thank you so much for being here. Um, I know you said you're going to send us some resources. I want to sure those get out to our individuals. Uh, Kiana, thank you so much for helping get Heather here. Uh, we hope maybe to have Heather later on this year come into Pearland. Uh, more information to come on that, guys, and uh, continue to further this conversation. Kiana, any closing thoughts from you? Yeah, it was so, so very interesting um, when I saw her presentation, but a month or two ago, I was like, oh, we've got to have you here on our show. So I definitely appreciate you. This is really good information, especially for our audience of business, local business owners. And we also have people that join us from kind of all over the U.S. as well and some of the different sure. networking groups that we're in. But it's it's really good information that you've shown and a lot of nuggets that I picked up. So like Jim, I was like, I'm going to have to rewatch this and take down my notes. <laughs> there are certain hey, areas. <laughs> I have a massive YouTube channel. It's Findability U and it has 180 yeah. individual instruction videos on all kinds of things that business owners can do to move the needle on their marketing in an easy, non-technical format. And I just want to, um, can you put in the chat your link? Because if anybody wants to set up like a consultation or a meeting with Heather to see how she can book, um, how she can help your business, then all you have to do is just click on the link. And I, I, I got mine booked. Yeah, my year's got yours booked. <laughs> yeah, I got, got I have a very long, I have a very long waiting list. It's like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. All right, I'm going to also put my YouTube channel in the chat as well. So awesome. Guys can check and then we'll put that, I think Jim will put that on the Facebook for anybody that's watching later. Kiana, I just appreciate you uh, saying the Facebook because I'm going to now get more and more people to say that just to have uh, fun with that as we go forward. <laughs> hey, that, uh, was yes. the that was the original name. I know, <laughs> that's what I'm going with. We're going with the original here today. Uh, <laughs> but both of those links have just been put in the Facebook chat. 
uh, for everybody today. Again, uh, Heather, thank you so much for joining on Let's Talk About It with Marketing Espionage. Uh, one of the best uh, titles of a presentation I've heard in a long time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the tips. Thank you for the, the tricks uh, to allow our small businesses to get it. You're, you're absolutely right. Majority of businesses are looking to be visible in a very crowded market. Uh, if they can uh, optimize their online visibility, they become a credible business and hopefully leads to growth for all of them as well. So uh, this is just a great way to tap into the, the Google because you talked about a uh, Dewey Decimal System. And I always, you know, I, when I talk, I always say, when was the last time you actually pulled out Webster's Dictionary? People start speeches by saying marketing is defined by Webster's. When was the last time you pulled out Webster's Dictionary? It's Google. And to me, Google imaging is absolutely right. So uh, we will be back here for Let's Talk About It in August. Uh, keep in mind, your chamber is here to serve business, promote growth, and empower our community. And print trainings like this and our YouTube channel are just that for your resources. If you are a business that could classify as a historically underutilized business, uh, please take advantage of our website. There is a key uh, area there that we will get you certified with the state of Texas so you can take advantage of some of those procurement process. And our August luncheon will feature an entrepreneurship panel featuring John Garrett, founder of Community Impact Newspaper, as well as Russell, founder of Gringo. So we'll see you at the next Chamber event. Heather and Kiana, thank you so much for joining us today. We will be going uh, off of Facebook right now. Y'all have a great